Welcome. Welcome to Jesus the Way Bible Study. We appreciate you. We appreciate you tuning in and appreciate everyone that is here. The lesson today has a lot to do with prayer and how it affected our Lord Jesus. Hey. And uh, we want to look at Hebrews 5 and 7. Paul's writing to the Hebrews and he says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears, and to him that was able to save him from death and was heard and that he feared. Now we know it's talking about Jesus. And we don't, we don't uh, seem to believe that Jesus could be this person because we know that He is Lord of Lord and King of Kings, has all power. We don't see Him weak and we don't see Him under these circumstances. So the Bible is telling us that the man, the human side of Christ was just like you and I. The human part of him didn't want to die, didn't want to suffer, and dread persecutions. And so... When you realize that, you see why he says here, in the days of his flesh, he's talking about the human part. And we know it was God in flesh, but we're not talking about the God part, we're talking about the flesh and blood part. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, this word supplications means groaning, earnest, earnestly requesting. Some people pray like, oh God, would you do this and that? When you do supplication, it's more like, Jesus, help us, oh, it's supplication. It's a more de deeper depth of prayer than just regular prayer. But he offered up prayer and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. So we know he's talking about the flesh. The flesh did not want to go through the persecution that he knew he was going to have to. So therefore, he, he was an earnest prayer he prayed earnestly because he had a purpose. He knew it was coming. He knew it was coming. We see him also in the book of Psalms. Now, David wrote some stuff in the book of Psalms that didn't have anything to do with David. And it, was, it was Jesus Christ expressing the way he felt on the day of the crucifixion and the days before. And Jesus was unable to tell us a bunch about it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but He told it in advance in Psalms. And look what He says, My God, my God, why hast Thou forsaken me? Thou art Thou so far from helping me why art thou so far from help me? And from the words of my roaring. So you know, uh, the writer said at the very end of his life, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Now, that's one verse that is hard to explain. Because, but we know it was the flesh, man, crying out. Um, the reason that we think maybe it was a misprint or something, 
is because we knew Jesus, we know Jesus knew He was going to die. And to do so, He knew that the Spirit had to leave the body. But anyway, Psalms 22 and 2, Jesus is saying, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but Thou hearest not. And in the night season, and am not silent. Look at this. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out their lips. They shake their heads, saying, He trusted on the Lord that He would deliver him. Let him deliver him, sin he delighteth in him. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. So in the book of Psalms, God was revealing the thoughts and the feelings of Jesus while he was here on earth being persecuted and being crucified too. So we get a glimpse of his thoughts. Now, he didn't say anything. The Bible said, like a lamb before the shears, dumb before the shears, he opened not his mouth. So he never said any of this while he was being crucified and tormented. But he had expressed his feelings in advance in the book of Psalms. And then we have in Hebrews where it says, that he prayed and he cried and he had tears and he was afraid of death. So it's no strange thing when we, mankind, fear death because it's something that humanity carries. Now, Jesus knew that he was going to be resurrected and that he would have all power but still, after all of that knowledge, the flesh did not want to die. Now, we today, we know that we got a better home in heaven. Yes. You know, like Paul, he said, it's better for me to go on and be with the Lord, but it's better for you that if I stay. Yes. Because Paul was a teacher and a leader in the church. You and I, we know that we're going to go be with the Lord, but in spite of that knowledge, the body does not want to die. Amen. We know that as soon as we die, we're going to be carried into uh, that place of rest until the rapture. But still the body does not want to submit. And so we see that Jesus suffered the same way. He was expressing his feelings here in Psalms that he had during that time of tribulation. Matthew 14, 22 says, And straightway Jesus constrained His disciples to get into a ship and to go before Him unto the other side while He sent the multitude away. And when He had sent the multitude away, He went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, He was there alone. So it makes you believe that maybe him and his disciples went up into the mountains together to pray. But you know after a person prays for a while, uh, they get up and leave. The disciples had left. And it says that he was left there alone. Now, you might wonder why, and I have myself, why Jesus, the Son of God, spent so much time praying. And we see that answer right here in Psalms. He says, uh, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Thou art, why art thou so far from help me and from the words of my roaring? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. And so we see that even though Christ had power, he had a burden. And even though he was praying earnestly and prayed all night, God was not giving him relief of that burden. 
Now most people, when they get down and pray, you don't want to say all people. When they pray and pray and pray and get to praying earnestly, God lifts that burden from them. They get up, they feel happy, they feel light, they feel relieved. But Christ carried the burden because he knew it was something yet to come. There's no way you're going to get away from it. And the flesh didn't want to do it, and so he prayed often, and here he prayed all night. He said that he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. And the one reason Jesus wanted to be alone is because, you know, a person don't want other people hearing you say some things. In the book of Psalms, it tells what he thought. But when he was alone praying and nobody could hear but him and his father, then he could pour out his soul and say things to him that he could not say in the presence of another person because it might make him look less than who he was if a person heard him crying and begging the Father because everybody was looking to him for strength. That's the way it is with you and I. People look to us for strength. But there's times whenever we go to the Lord in prayer and we say things we don't want no one to hear. God hears them. We get alone somewhere. You know, just because you don't hear someone praying don't mean you're not. We get alone somewhere where there's no one to hear but you and the Lord. That's the most precious time in prayer because you can open your heart up and tell God just how you feel and what you want. Yes, amen. That's when you get results. Luke 6 and 11 says, And they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. And it come to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain and prayed, and continued all night in prayer to God. And so he had a reason to pray. Here the multitude, even the Old Testament church people, they were offended by him and what he did and who he said he was. To the point to where the Bible declares that at one time they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. Well, you know that had to affect a person. That's just like me right now on this job. Whenever I started this job, you know, someone of uh, knowledge about the job and the crew came to me and said, I guess you know you don't have a single friend here. This is cutthroat. Everybody is out for themselves. And I found that to be true. And you know, I haven't been in the workforce working for someone else for some time and I almost forgot how degrading it can be not work, but working with people. Reminds me of being in junior high and how all the kids, you know, few here and a few there and a few here and how they'll talk about each other run each other down and say things that's not nice. If they can, they'll say something to hurt your feelings, lie on you, and say that you're uh, doing things that you're not, saying things that you didn't, and always brown nosing to the boss. And I've been facing that on this job. And that's just a small part. That's just a small part. But yet, it makes me pray because it hurts my feelings and brings me down. I can only imagine what Jesus felt like yes. trying to help people. And they come against him so violently, bitter from their heart, with hatred, with raw hatred and bitterness and he said that they hear that they were filled with madness. When I, Christ had discernment of the Spirit 
<clears throat> and he knew how they felt about him in their hearts. It was enough to drive him to the mountains. It said that he went to the mountains and prayed and continued all night in prayer to God. Now we understand a little more about why Jesus felt it necessary to pray all night to God. Because of the way he was being treated daily. Because of the satanic powers that were moving through people. Yeah. You know, he rebuked demons out of people. And he didn't have any fear of demons. But it was the way people were treating him. I'm talking about the church. The Old Testament Pharisees and Sadducees. And how they come against it. Not just women, not just men, but everyone. Women had a big part in it too. And he prayed all night. He could not get delivered enough that he could pray four or five minutes. Or he could pray maybe an hour or two. The burden was there and he could not face Tomorrow, until God helped him. God's my help. And he prayed all night. Yeah. It amazes me because I've prayed a long time in the woods, but I've never prayed all night. I've never hit the woods praying and be praying when the sun come up. But Jesus did. Jesus had to because of the trials he faced as a man, not as God. Yes. God didn't need to pray. It was the man part that needed to overcome. Yes. Now look, God's in our life through the Holy Ghost. God don't need to overcome. It's this flesh. Yes. Amen. It's the way we're buffeted in this world that affects our minds yes. and the choices we make. That's what drives us to our knees. That's why we have purpose to pray. Yes, amen. That's why we have purpose. Because we need God and He's our only help. Yes. Matthew 26, 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane and said unto the disciples, Set ye here while I go and pray yonder. Now we know this is just before the crucifixion. They're going to come and get the Lord. And he knows it. And he's, he don't have victory over it even yet. He's still struggling with it. And they're coming to get him. And he knows it. And so he takes the three brothers that always went places. Peter, James, and John. He says, you ain't here you sit here, I'll go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, which is James and John, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy just before the crucifixion. You might say, oh, God gave him victory over it all. He, had, he was strong over it all. He was a much man. He was, he was a man's man. Well, in Hebrews 5 and 7, remember he said that in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears and to him that was able to save her from death and was heard in that he feared. The flesh was struggling with dying and leaving this world even though he knew that he could pick his life back up. Even though he knew he was going to go back and preach to the generation that was alive while the ark was being built. Even though he knew that he'd be resurrected with all power, King of kings, Lord of lords forever. Still, the flesh, look how strong the flesh is. The flesh left an imprint. It had a personality of its own. The flesh did not want to die. Didn't want to suffer. 
You don't want to see people suffer. You don't want to see your loved ones bad off. It makes you cry. It makes you pray. It makes you seek God. And so, we're following in His very footsteps. Yes. Then said Him to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. So we get another glimpse of Jesus. And we see how He's feeling it and what's going through His mind. Because He says it from His own lips. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. And so He said He went a little farther and fell on His face and prayed. Fell on His face. We're talking about Jesus, the Son of God. The one that redeemed you and I. The one that knows what we're going through. Because he went through it. The one that knows that you can conquer death, hell, and the grave because he has. He said that, that uh, in the 42nd verse, he went again. He went away again the second time and prayed. And then the 44th verse, he says, he left them and went away again and prayed the third time. Praying the third time. Oh, Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Jesus said in one place, don't think that I can't even now pray my Father and He would send legions of angels. Jesus had the power. He knew he had the power. It was his decision, but he needed strength from God. Yes, amen. God's our only help and our only strength. Yes, amen. John 16 and 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So Jesus knew that He was coming back and living in the hearts of people for the glorious thing. But to do so, He had to conquer the flesh. Just like you and I today. There's things people would like to do that's not right. Things that feel good but not right. Things that look good but they're not right. We've got a decision. And we may have to pray like Jesus yeah. and pray and pray and maybe fast and pray yeah. until uh, Jesus <clears throat> until Jesus brings the answer. You know, yeah. when Christ started His ministry, the first thing He did was He was driven into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And sometimes we seem like we're that person being tempted. He overcame and we can overcome. Yes. He says, James 5 and 17, Elias was a man subject to like passion as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth for the space of three years and six months. Now this, this kind of prayer is the same thing Jesus was doing whenever he was praying in the book of Psalms, when he was praying in Matthew, he says, pray earnestly. Then it says, and he prayed again, and the heavens gave, gave rain, and the earth on the earth. And so, we know that there's a reason prayer. Look at the price God paid for our salvation. Oh, yes. Look what He went through. He suffered as a man in like passion as you and I suffer. And did not want to die even though He knew it was why He came on earth. You know, you can say the same thing about us. Why was we born? Why was we brought on this earth? You know, they say that when a man's sperm uh, is planted in a woman's womb, that there is literally thousands of them. What made you be the one to fertilize the leg, the egg, and 
be brought forth to birth. Why was you brought here? God knew you. He made sure that you was the one born. Yeah. We're part of the family. He saw the family before the world was made. Yes, Jesus. We was brought into this world for a reason. To serve God and to hear Him say, Well done. Just like Christ kept his commitment, we must keep ours. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Give the Lord a good praise. Hallelujah.